before we get started, just want to give a shout out to my affiliate Constant Contact. If you have any kind of online business, you know how important it is to keep your customers close to you. And if you don't have an email list, then you can't do that. It's just not as easy to do it on your own. So if you go through my affiliate link, meganbrame.com slash constant contact, you can have a free trial of all of constant contacts goodies. They'll help you with automation, onboarding, marketing, all of that stuff. And you know, the holiday season, oh my God, am I really saying this? The holiday season is already right around the corner. We have to start thinking about Q4 and this is the time I would definitely recommend giving them a shot. Even if you don't use them, get some kind of email service going. But if you go through my affiliate link, megabrame.com slash constant contact, you'll have all the tools you need to set up an effective email marketing campaign and it's free. Give it a shot. Use their free trial. I think you're going to love it. All right, let's get started. It's time to grow your business, stop spinning your wheels, and build the life you deserve. And I'm here to help. My name is Megan Brain. This is Stop Sucking at Business. Hey guys, welcome to the show. My name is Megan Brame. I'm a five-time award-winning entrepreneur. I am here to help you succeed at your own business. So thank you so much for joining me today. So first things first, book review. I just finished You Are a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. And wow, it was just amazing. It's a very much uh, a mindset kind of book. It was such a good book. And I got it on audiobook on my Libby app and such a big fan of it because it is all about mindset. And it is about, uh, if you've ever done something with the teachings of Abraham or, uh, Louise Hay, something like that, then this is all kind of familiar territory to you, but just thinking about willing yourself to feel, uh, like you're able to do anything and that you can achieve anything and preventing negative talk and all of these things that, you know, all of them just help contribute to a better mindset. And that's how you make your money, you know, by stopping yourself from having limiting beliefs, from having worries or fears that you can't do it. If you just stop that and you get out of your own way, Jen Sincero believes that that's where the money is. And I totally agree. Um, I think it's a great book for when you're feeling like whatever you're doing is not working and you need something that is going to help you figure out a little bit more uh, where to go and what to do and things like that. So I definitely recommend it. Again, I got it on the Libby app uh, and it is a free app if you have a library card. And I'm not sure if it's just United States only, but, um, if it's not, let me know just kind of out of curiosity. Also, this is the first episode I am recording with video on IGTV. And, uh, as the IGTV people have already heard, I am (laughs) so winging this and so not prepared. I have no makeup on. I have like pimple city because of hormones and life. And it's just, you know, what is it? It can't be perfect. It just has to be done. So I'm going to get over the hurdle of being on video and I'm going to be here for you in whichever medium you consume this. So as a little side note, to tell you how adult I am becoming in my life, I just found out from a very good friend that she is receiving a legitimate book deal and she will be publishing a book later on. I, I'm not sure if it's this year or next year. And I'm, <laughs> I, I know how weird this is going to sound, but bear with me. I am, was the only feeling I had was pride for her and excitement for her. And then I started to think like, shouldn't I feel jealous? Why am I not feeling like I used to just have this feeling of anytime someone else was succeeding, that that was me failing, I guess, or some 
some possibility being taken out of the pot that I couldn't have. And I didn't feel that way. I felt super happy for her and very proud of her. And I'm kind of proud of myself for that because that is a huge growth for me. And I know that that can be a difficult mindset because believe me, as much as I always wanted to be the happy-go-lucky person with the, you know, billowy linen pantsuit, uh, I was very, in my 20s, I was very jealous and I was very competitive and I'm still competitive to some extent, but at least now I can be happy for others. And that comes from a true place. So just a little fun fact for you on, yes, Megan is becoming an adult person. So this episode, I want to talk about, uh, the conference I just came from called Haven and what I've learned about conferences in general, because I know it's a very specialized conference. It's for home decor bloggers. And I know that that is probably not what you're into. And sorry, I was picking lint off of my recording booth, shiny object syndrome, right? So if you've never been to a conference, I kind of want to get that hurdle over for you and talk about what it's like to go and what to expect. I actually am going to do a whole series of blog posts on the before, the during, and the after and of a conference and what you should do during those times to make it a successful thing. I know it's a huge cost for a lot of people, myself included, and uh, it can be really beneficial to your business, especially if you utilize it correctly. So let me talk quickly about Haven, and then I'll dive into basics of uh, conference life. So again, Haven is a conference for home decor bloggers, and this is my third year that I went. I went my first year when I had just started my blog, and the second year I went with Steve, who was not into it. And the third year, this year, I spoke. I was, oh, it was so cool, you guys. I was a marketing expert there and blew my mind that someone would, you know, whenever someone else calls you an expert is always just kind of like, what? Really? Well, thanks. Um, so I ran a round table and I talked about digital marketing marketing. And at first I had an idea of what I was going to say. I was going to do a presentation and on my, you know, brought my laptop and brought my slide deck and was ready to rock until someone sat down and started talking to me about their business and what they were looking for in terms of marketing help. So I just started talking to her about what I thought she should do. And then as I was talking to her, another pair of women sat down who uh, were running a business together. And so once I finished with her, then I went over to them and I asked them, you know, what's going on with your business. And long story short, as I was talking to them, um, more women came and sat around and I had a full table, which I was very excited about, but uh, it ended up instead of being a presentation, it was just a really informal talk about, I would finish talking to one person about their business and what struggles they were having with marketing. And then I'd just go to the next person. And so everybody got specialized advice from me and from the rest of the group about what to do. So I hope it was really beneficial for them because it was really beneficial for me and made me feel very, um, like I had my shit together, I guess. And, you know, sometimes that's a really hard concept to have. Uh, for the rest of the conference, I got amazing swag for, you know, home and DIY improvement stuff. And I took classes on Instagram growth, um, passive income streams and, um, advanced SEO. I also took another like a woo woo thing about, um, using influence for good, which actually you didn't really learn anything, but I digress. I talked to awesome sponsors about potential partnerships for my home blog and Instagram account. As I said last week, I am now running it myself. So I got to get all going. 
and I got to figure out my schedule. And so that was really helpful to kind of be amongst like-minded people and like-minded crowds of sponsors. And I got home, unpacked, figured out all of the stuff that I had, like all of the swag that I had. I had, I brought a checked bag solely for my swag. Like that's how awesome that conference is. But, um, that is not always the case, FYI. And planned out all of the things that I was going to do with the information that I learned. And now this is the week that I'm going to start utilizing that. So I'm pretty excited about it. Now, if you've never been to a conference before, I feel like it's a hairy, scary monster, especially in terms of cost, especially if it's out of your city, which most of the time it is. For me, nobody's coming to upstate New York to talk about blogging. You know, it's just not a thing. So I recommend just doing, if you're going to your first conference, and if you've already been to conferences, then I'd love to get your opinion on um, what your experiences have been, because I I just love talking about this kind of stuff. So if you've never been to a conference, um, I would say start with a smaller conference. I wouldn't suggest going to something bigger like VidCon or Alt or South by Southwest even. Um, I would really start with small, specialized, niche conferences because I feel like those are the ones that actually give you the most value for the least amount of cost. And I would budget a ticket price of $250 to five hundred dollars and sometimes that feels like a sticker shock especially if you are in business if you're new to conferences if you're on a bootstrap budget shoestring budget too um i get that but think about what you're going there for you know these are highly specialized classes um opportunities to talk to brands in the industry opportunities to network and things like that so it's a big sticker price. The cost of that, um, you know, your Uber to and from the airport, your hotel, your flight, or however you're getting there, gas, tolls, whatever. And so uh, it can be scary. I get it, but it is such a worthy investment in your business. So I would start looking around for, um, niches that niche, um, conferences that are relevant to you. So just off the top of my head, there's blog her, there is snap, which is a crafters conference. Um, there's Haven. I'm sure there's dozens of others. I don't really know of a lot because I'm just kind of trying to stay in my own lane and not spend ridiculous amounts of money at different places. Um, there are also the options of virtual conferences, which are just held online. You can do them in your own leisure. And most of the time you'll get the slide decks and videos and things like that available to you. But if this is your first conference, I probably wouldn't recommend doing that because it's just not the same experience as being in person, talking to brands and talking to people. That one's just more of a, you're watching a bunch of videos and, um, you can learn a lot from them, but it, it's just not the same. So I, I wouldn't recommend doing virtual conferences as your first one, even if you are a super focused person. Um, so once you do that, once you go to a conference or once you decide to go to a conference, let me start there. You should go there with a goal in mind. So for me at Haven, my goal was well, I had two goals. My goal was to not make a fool of myself when I was speaking. (laughs) And my second goal was to really learn about how to better develop my social media game when it came to being an influencer and being uh, someone who works with brands. That's not my forte. Uh, I haven't done it a lot. And I know that if I want, you know, we've talked about my goals that I have and your goals as well. One of my goals is to really start upping the game of the beige house when it comes to brand sponsorships and things like that. 
and long-term relationships. And I knew that I really had to go there with the intentionality of speaking to brands about specific projects and figuring out how do you do this and how do you quote people and what are the prices that people quote and things like that. And so those were my goals. I feel like I satisfied those goals with the classes I took and with the relationships that I developed with sponsors. But your goal might be something totally different. Your goal might be to meet other people who are doing the same thing you're doing and developing a mastermind with them or just learning the tools of the trade or finding out new avenues or learning about how to turn your hobby into a business. There are dozens of reasons to go to a conference and it doesn't have to be the same as what I am saying. It could be something completely different when you go there. Well, first, okay, (laughs) let me back up again. The most important things for you to bring with you are something to record notes with. So either your iPad or uh, a notebook. I always bring a notebook. I'm a handwriting person. I feel like I learn better when I write things down. So I always bring a notebook and good pens, business cards. You want to bring a business card with you that has your social media contact info. What I've learned from a lot of bloggers at these conferences is that putting your picture on your business card is huge, especially if you're networking and you're going there to network, you get so many business cards and you won't remember who they are, what they were doing, unless they really struck a chord with you. And so putting your face on your business card really just helps you stand out and really helps people remember who you were and associate you to the blog that you are or the business that you're running. Just a little fun fact, a little tip that I have learned. I am, I don't go there to network on purpose. I go there, I go to my conferences and network as a, an unintentional reason, but I still, so I don't really ever go to like after parties or things like that. But if you are going to network and you're going there to learn from other people, then I absolutely recommend taking advantage of after parties, um, sponsored dinners. If you get invited to those, any kind of opportunity where you get to hang out with bloggers, there was an eighties dance party. And I was just like, I just want to go back to my hotel and have a beer. So I did not participate in the eighties dance party, but it, that's just a great way to meet other people and to develop those kind of relationships. So I would recommend always staying engaged if your goal is to meet people and become a more networked blogger or business owner. Once you take your classes, I would recommend never, never, ever, ever being afraid to ask questions. I am probably a very annoying student at classes that I'm really interested in because I ask questions all the time or I will participate. And if I know something and I want to share it, I will share it. I hope that that doesn't make me an asshole to people. I hope that it it helps, but um, it's just my nature. You know, I'm here podcasting with you guys just because I have to tell people the things I know because I love what I do. And I want you guys to do the same thing. I want you to never feel afraid to ask questions or to get involved and become a contributor. You're there, you're paying to learn. So learn and never be afraid to ask questions or to talk to the people at the table with you and get their opinions on things. We're all trying to learn together, right? And we're all trying to uh, beat our own struggles. So never feel like you're in a place of competition or that you have to hide what you know, or that no one's going to share with you because that's not the feeling that I've gotten at any conference that I've ever been to. If you're going there to talk to brands, you should go with an understanding of who the brands are that'll be there. And they're usually sponsors. They're usually ones that have like a 10 by 10 booth set up in, uh, they're usually run in hotels, right? So they'll have like a spot in a hallway um, where the main 
conference is running. And it usually helps when you are able to, and again, if you're running a business and this doesn't sound like your jam, go there and talk to vendors. And remember that these brands aren't just bloggers, blogger friendly. Like they actually would probably love to talk to you about their products if you are a business and how they can help you because most likely you're going to pay for them and you're not just some blogger who's looking for free shit. So I would do your research ahead of time and figure out what brands are going to be there, which ones are relevant to your business, to your blog, and figure out what you want to talk to them about. I feel like the least successful relationships are the ones where you go to a booth and you say, so tell me about your brand. Like, I get it. I get that you need to be sold as much as they need to be sold. And, you know, that's a relationship, but you want to make sure that you're going there with an understanding of what, how you're going to spend your time and not wasting your time. We're not wasting their time. It's all expensive for everybody, right? So go there with just laser focus on what your plans are. Say that you see, I don't say that Home Depot is going to be there. They're one of the sponsors of Haven and you want to work with Home Depot because they're a huge brand. They're in your area. They're accessible. Everybody knows them, but you don't know what project you want to talk about. That's okay. However, you will probably do better if you have a specific idea of a project that you want to do with them. And again, I don't mean specific like a home decor project, but a project of any kind of plan, whatever it is and whatever the sponsor is. Go there, talk to them, give them your card, make sure you get their card and their information and ask them questions about the project that you want to do. Now, what you'll find is that Often they have their own ulterior motives for being there, right? They have, they're launching a new product or a new line, or they're there for a specific reason. And yours might not be the reason that they're there. I would not just use that as a dissuasion for talking to them about your ideas, because it might not be something that they have thought about. An example is that, um, I am in the middle of planning a project for my bedroom and turning it black. Painting the whole room black sounds super goth and sounds teenagery, but it's gonna be beautiful if it actually works the way I want it to work. And I went to Haven knowing I had that project and knowing that there were brands there who, even if I don't work with them, like even if I don't do a sponsored post or anything like that, they are still able to answer a lot of questions that I would have. So I went to one of the sponsors who was a paint company and talked to them about the project, showed them an example on my phone of what I was going to accomplish and got their feedback and got their advice. Now they're not pushing black paint, right? Nobody's really going to push black paint until goth is super in season. And I don't even know when that would be (laughs) Halloween, right? I don't know, but Very few people are looking to paint their rooms black. So this was not a project that they were there to push. However, what I was showing them and what I was talking to them about got them very interested in what I was doing. And we started to talk about what that would look like in terms of a a promotion with them or a sponsorship, whatever that would be. So that's my point. Um, they were there to push one thing and I was super into their one thing, but I also went there with my idea and together we could kind of bounce off each other and learn about things and learn about, uh, you know, where we both were in this world, in this home decor world and how we could work together. And that's the key word is together. So just an example of how to utilize um, the sponsors and the brands when they come to the shows. Once you're out of there, you're done with the conference. Here's my advice. Go home and unpack quickly because 
your suitcase will sit there forever if you let it. I, I am super guilty of this. I actually had a bag of things from the last conference that I hadn't gone through until like six months later. And that's not okay. That is just a waste of money and time because that six months I could have spent talking to them, learning about products, learning about projects, creating projects, creating relationships. And it just all sat there. Didn't do anything. Waste of money and time. Super sad about it. So learn from my mistakes, come home, unpack everything, organize your business cards that you've received, put them into two piles. One is networking, one is brands. Now go through each pile and start prioritizing them. There's going to be some in there that are just, you know, your blog business heroes that you can't believe you met them or they were super interesting and you're going to be friends with them and you had really good connection, make sure that those are the priority and follow them on social media and things like that. For brands, same thing. Which ones do you feel most excited about? Which vendors do you feel are going to be a really good partnership? Start prioritizing that and developing your schedule for outreach. Spend a week, a dedicated week after the conference, working on everything you've learned. A conference is wasted if you don't utilize what you've learned. And so many of us will have these ideas of like, oh, someday I'm definitely going to do this. And they never do it. I am guilty of it too. Spend a week, just one week, utilizing and putting into action things that you've learned that will move your business forward. After that, stay with the group if you can. If you felt like it was a beneficial um, conference. If you didn't, then now you know, and uh, you can move on. But stay active within the conference. Look for new opportunities. Like I said, I had been going to Haven for two years, and I finally was bold enough, I guess, to ask to speak there because I loved the conference so much. And yeah, it helps me kind of get my name out there. But more importantly to me, because I'm a weirdo. (laughs) I guess it, it should be more important to get my name out, but more important to me was that I got to be a part of this place that I love so much. And this kind of, this literal haven that I love to go to every year. Stay connected, stay involved if you're into it. If you're not, then you're not. It is what it is. But those are my tips for conference life. Um, As far as like, should you room with people? Should you not? That all depends on your budget and your anxiety levels. I usually room by myself because I have, I utilize my points on Marriott and things like that to make sure that, you know, I get fancy rooms, but I also like, I just like to veg and decompress. And so I don't like to have a lot of people around me, but I know that there are people, especially if you're going there to network, right? Where it is important for you to be active and to stay in the zone with it. So just some food for thought on that. But if you have any questions, um, I'm going to do a three-part series on the blog where I get more involved in this and I go more in depth into different things that you can do, different tips I have, but shoot me a question on Instagram. You can DM me at stop sucking at business and um, I'll be happy to answer it and clarify anything. But in the meantime, I am going to leave you this episode with a blurb, a snippet, I guess, of the closing speaker, Amy Howard at Haven. And just to give you a little pump up because she was super inspiring and I think you'll like it. I'll talk to you guys next week. So I have this sieve and it's like a brainstorm. And yes, I love dreaming. I love having fun. But it's, is it a good idea or is it a God idea? Every single thing that has ever happened in your life is preparing you for a moment that has yet to come. That's so exciting to me. There was a great movie years ago, and many of you may have watched it or may not have, but it was called Mr. Holland's Opus. You seen it? And I think about this musician who his goal is to be able to write this symphony, to write this opus, and life gets in the way and how he's 
measuring his life as what's out there. It's right in that symphony. When that symphony happens and when that symphony is performed, then I reach my goal instead of missing the intentionality and in living his life today. And then having that child that was deaf and that just added to his bitterness because that child couldn't share his dream of writing that music. And then for all of those people to come together. And then the woman, what was her name that became the governor? Does anybody remember? That became the governor and she's there when they all came together at this reunion when he's losing his job and he's, this is his early retirement party because the school can't afford the music program anymore. And they all come to play. And she said, what I've realized in this, Mr. Holland, is we are your opus. I don't want you to miss the joy of the journey. I don't want you to miss your calling. The joy of part to me of Haven is we're all kind of cut out of the same cloth here. We love beautiful things. We love community. We love creativity. We love supporting one another. But I'm telling you, you have everything you need right now to be why God put you on this earth. And I want you to celebrate that and love that and allow it to come to fruition because there's no other way to live. I am so, so blessed to be the mother maker, as I've called myself, with a maker studio. That part of the reason why I developed a maker studio was that I could mentor other women to realize their calling, to stop long enough to have community, and to invest in others. So I really, really give you a charge to make today the first day, not looking back, to work in the margins and start planning your future.